In this episode of Zoomer Life. I wanted a briefcase. Briefcase. Lots of money. I was in a Salvation Army, found this briefcase, stenciled the word tricks on the side of it. I think it's way more fun than just any old briefcase I would have bought, say, at the Bay. Zoomer Life. Health, wellness, and longevity from the world's brightest minds. The situation in Europe is uh, very much in the news. We've all been hanging by our fingernails, wondering whether the world is about to uh, collapse back into another devastating recession. Greece is on the edge of default. Italy is next. Spain and Portugal are tottering on the brink. And, and so all of a sudden, notions of thrift, indeed notions of austerity, are very much in the news. And uh, that's what brought our next speaker, uh, Jane, to mind. She's a woman of some substance who has decided that it is thrift that is actually going to save the world and has come up with some admirable approaches to thrift, which perhaps you may have read in Zoomer magazine, but which she will enlighten you about Today, right now, right here, Jane McGee. Thank you, Moses. Thank you. I'm delighted to be here. And yes, I am a frugalista. Now, I'm presuming that most of you probably understand frugality quite well. Frugality, thrift, it all sort of boils down to the same thing. And that thing is the practice of treating money, time, and resources thoughtfully and not wastefully. Now, I'm presuming also that most of you were born before 1965, so you grew up before credit card culture, before round-the-clock shopping, before disposable appliances. You probably remember things like repair shops. There was a time when you had your TV, your toaster. It didn't matter what, you had it repaired. Nowadays, of course, we throw it out. Now, there was a time you could even go to the Hudson's Bay and get your zippers repaired. Of course, that is long behind us now. Does anybody remember when you could go to Eaton's and have your perfume bottles refilled? Does anybody remember Eaton's? OK. <laughs> well, you used to go and get your perfume drammed. You would go in and you would just have that beautiful bottle refilled as opposed to throwing it out. There's only a few places in the world that still do this. This is Fortnum & Mason in London where they dram Guerlain perfumes. This is Rockefeller Center in Manhattan. Now, at the base of Rockefeller Center, there is something that not a lot of people have noticed. There is a marble block and John D. Rockefeller had it placed there when he started building this center during the Depression. And on that marble block is inscribed one word, and that word is thrift. He felt that thrift was the cornerstone of his success and of everyone's success, frankly. Now, John D. Rockefeller, by the way, even in current dollars, amassed the single largest fortune ever amassed by an American. So thrift is something that we clearly uh, hold quite dear. This is a quote from uh, John Templeton of the, uh, John, Sir John Templeton of the Templeton Growth Fund. He was sort of a Warren Buffett of a slightly earlier time. He bundles thrift in with a variety of other things. And I think you'll find that there is tons of scholarship, tons of theology on the subject of thrift. Everyone from Martin Luther to John Kelvin, uh, John Knox, every Scottish relative I have, uh, Andrew Carnegie. And one thing you should know is the word thrift derives from the word to thrive. So in spite of all that, you would think that thrift would be something that we hold rather dear. The actual truth of the matter is, is it's losing traction constantly. Currently, 25% of all Canadians are saving less than 5% of their income. Some are saving none at all. And by the way, um, another 50% of Canadians are saving only about 10%, and none of this is adequate. And a lot of this is a prophylactic response to the re recent global collapse. Now, my personal story in thrift begins here, when I was a child. See the guy in the glasses, the woman with the dog? I blame them. Those are my Scottish parents.
Get the latest Zoomer Life news, presenter information, and watch streaming video at www.zoomerlifeconference.ca. Zoomer Life, health, wellness, and longevity from the world's brightest minds. I want to explain the difference between thrift and parsimony. The difference between thrift and parsimony, or miserliness, is that thrift is a good thing. Parsimony is a bad thing. Parsimony is watering down the milk. Now, it's the opposite of thrift because what it does is it overvalues goods and it does so at the expense of joyful living. So there is a big difference. I have some people, when I talk about thrift, they raise their eyebrows and they think I'm advocating cheapness. Cheap, thrift, two different things. This is my favorite cartoon of late because I talk a lot about eco-thrift. Eco-thrift ties your sustainability to the planet's sustainability. So your ideas are polluting the planet and costing us money. Try this. This is an important message. This is my logo. It's also my website, WN Squared, Waste Not, Want Not. Now, I like this image because it's a jar of pennies or coins, and what it says is that little things add up, and they certainly do. I did a series, of, I'm a columnist for the National Post, and I did a series for them that ran for about a year on just this, and it did really well for us, and one of the reasons is, is it hinges on creativity, and everyone loves creativity. Now, my theory is, the reason people like thrift, at least the, what we saw, is that everybody wants to get one off on death and taxes. And the only way you're ever going to do so is by living thriftily. That's me. I also write a column for Zoomer. Now, uh, I love doing this. I, I really do love this subject. And as we progress through here, I hope you'll understand why I enjoy this so much. To me, thrift is, well, it's an art form. And it's way more fun than crossword puzzles or Sudoku. Sudo, I always say that wrong, Sudoku, did I get it right? Or is it, yeah. Anyway, I'm just going to also mention, you see what it says, Jane McDougall finds beauty in old candles. This is what I was talking about here. I don't throw out my old candle butts. I save them, melt them down with some crayons, turn them into something kind of useful. Those become hostess gifts. So we're starting to get an idea of where I go with thrift. Now, my personal story in thrift begins here when I was a child. See the guy in the glasses, the woman with the dog? I blame them. Those are my Scottish parents, and they were hell-bent on ensuring that their kids were thrifty and self-sustaining. Uh, now, neither of my parents came from much. In fact, they came from very, very, very little. But as a consequence of their choices, which was they didn't buy anything they couldn't afford, and they worked hard, it worked. I grew up with country clubs, uh, private schools, tropical Christmas holidays, so it was a very different existence to theirs. However, they also insisted that we wash our own windows, mow our own lawn, paint our house, we had a vegetable garden, we darned socks. I had to, oh, I had to live on homemade bread, homemade jam, homemade soup. I honestly thought my name should have been Oliver. It was just too miserable for words. But I survived, and I now have children of my own, so they're getting their revenge. I eventually married. I married a guy with a tremendous work ethic, and uh, he was brilliant. Anyway, he, uh, he made a fortune. And while he was building his international business empire, I set about creating our home. I did this the only way I knew how. I clipped grocery coupons, I saved wrapping paper, I washed windows with vinegar and newspaper, and I bought couture gowns. So my relationship with money was completely schizophrenic. I felt like Cinderella and a drunken sailor simultaneously. Anyway, that marriage ended just about the time I was getting comfortable with household help and price tag blindness. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, so I became a divorced woman living on a fixed income. Now, I was lucky, I was asset rich, but I was relatively cash poor, which is an interesting equation. However, I didn't find this constraining. I found this uh, wonderful in its own way because I had never been comfortable with extravagance. And suddenly, I had to start thinking harder. But it had already started to happen. I had started to turn into my Scottish mom. Now, this is my mom in her vegetable garden. You can see the corn there. What you can't see behind her is the zucchini, the carrots, the, you know, on and on. She grows enough vegetables for my entire family still. Uh, anyway, so I found that this whole business of suddenly having 
uh, stuff to maintain properties and whatever, and not having a ton of cash was not actually a bad thing. It cleared out a bunch of things in my life for me. I became doubly creative. I really found that uh, there was this big masquerade going on, and for the most part, what it involved with was uh, consumption. You were constantly in a race to show who was buying more stuff than the next person. Now, Will Rogers summed it up. There's a lot of people out there going broke, spending money they don't have, buying stuff they don't need to impress people they don't like. I like that one. I also like this one. You can never get enough of what you don't need to make you happy. So I got kicked off that treadmill and had to make peace with this stuff, but that was fine because that was how I was raised. In fact, I honestly thought was use it up, make it do, make it last, or do without. I thought that was a nursery rhyme. Anyway, I have nothing against prosperity. I, have, I mean, prosperity, yes, I love prosperity. I have nothing against quality, prestige, luxury goods, any of those things. What I don't like is false prosperity. Real prosperity is like good health. False prosperity is like a bad toupee. Bay Rum Cologne. It's a fragrance that's been around for hundreds of years. It was first made in the Caribbean. I found the recipe for this online, and I thought, well, I can make this. Now, you can buy Bay Rum at Brooks Brothers. Four ounces is going to run you about $50. For 50 bucks, I could make enough for everybody in this room. Get the latest Zoomer Life news, presenter information, and watch streaming video at www.zoomerlifeconference.ca. Zoomer Life, health, wellness, and longevity from the world's brightest minds. This is a good example of what I'm talking about. This is my trellis at my backyard. I wanted to have that glassed in. I figured it was going to cost me around $2,000. I was out by about $10,000. The guy shows up, gives me a quote. He says, well, it's going to you know, cost this much. He explains why. It's going to have to be safety glass, this gauge, on and on. And I think, OK, thank you. I'll get back to you really soon. Ha <laughs> ha. A few weeks later, I'm driving through an alleyway. I see some shower doors. And I think to myself, hey, that's safety glass, about the right gauge. So I ask the construction workers if I can have it. They load them into my car. I take them home. I clean them up. I buy the appropriate glazing uh, installation materials, stick them up on my trellis. By the time the summer was over, I had glassed in my entire back patio and kept more than $10,000 in my bank account and thousands of pounds of glass out of the landfill. Now, why this matters to you is me having a savings account means that when I need a hip replacement or to move into a Rivera facility, I'm not coming to you for this. I can take care of myself. And we have got a lot of people out there who are not following this plan. We have a lot of people who are going to be relying on eBay to sell their Birkin bags, their Beanie Babies, all those things so that they can afford themselves because they have not lived prudently, to say the least. Now, a lot of the work I do, and I do a lot of talks up in Vancouver to civic government and schools or whatever on things like eco-waste, eco-fees, uh, landfill issues, on and on, has to do with waste diversion. And people are throwing a lot of stuff away. Alleyways are starting to fill up, just like ravines, with tons and tons of illegally disposed of materials. Now, this is going to get very messy if it isn't messy already. It's also a health hazard. Now, the thing is about this is that the only way we're really going to deal with this, unless you want to pay ever-escalating taxes, is if we turn the city into a self-cleaning oven. Now, this trend is often referred to as urban mining and urban logging, and I think it's something we're going to have to encourage. But if we don't do this, it's going to get worse. We have to encourage this notion of a self-cleaning oven. So for me, the whole premise of the three R's is no longer reduce, reuse, recycle. It's reduce, reimagine recycle. And I'm going to show you now a bunch of the things I do in my adventures in thrift. I needed a towel bar. Went to a store, looked at some towel bars, thought, oh, wow, who knew you could spend 600 bucks on a towel bar? Driving through an alleyway, saw a bentwood rocker, and thought the support structure in the bentwood rocker made a very nice towel bar. So I got a towel bar for free. I wanted a briefcase. Briefcase, lots of money was in a Salvation Army, found this briefcase, and I thought it was really cool. It reminded me of the one my dad had. Stenciled the word tricks on the side of it. I think it's way more fun than just any old briefcase I would have bought, say, at the Bay. There's another one, Poet for Hire. I'm a writer. I like carrying that one around. 
Once again, the other part of this is that one of the things I have found that consumption obesity causes is homogeneity. We all start to look and act like one another because we're all being persuaded to buy all the same stuff. Now, we showed this picture in uh, Zoomer, and what it's about is Bayram Cologne. It's a fragrance that's been around for hundreds of years. It was first made in the Caribbean. Anyway, it isn't uh, rum that you drink, it's rum that you wear. And it isn't rum at all. <laughs> anyway, uh, I found the recipe for this online, and I thought, well, I can make this. So I did, and it was dead simple to do, and it turned out beautifully, fabulously. Now, you can buy Bay Rum at Brooks Brothers. Four ounces is going to run you about $50. For 50 bucks, I could make enough for everybody in this room. So this is easily done. And what's more, it lets you reuse all those great bottles that really shouldn't be going to the landfill. All I did was stencil on a name on that one. Do you see that hair dryer? Well, that was a vintage commercial hair dryer I found in an alleyway. Uh, I turned that into a floor lamp. Get the latest Zoomer Life news, presenter information, and watch streaming video at www.zoomerlifeconference.ca. Zoomer Life. Health, wellness, and longevity from the world's brightest minds. I did a show for the Recycling Council of BC. Uh, it was called Tampered, and it was all stuff that I basically had created for the National Post that I had to get out of my garage. Now, what I want you to see right here um, is, do you see that hair dryer? Well, that was a vintage commercial hair dryer I found in an alleyway. I don't know about you guys, but in Vancouver, there is like an amazing thing. I even found a camel hassock in the alleyways of Vancouver. Uh, I turned that into a floor lamp. Now, it's a very funky floor lamp, but I still, I love it. These are three tabletops that I found. Now, we showed you this in Zoomer as well, but um, these are just in alleyways. People don't want to pay to just go discard things, so they chuck them. I took them home, sanded them off, did a bunch of stuff, and painted them. You might not like them, but I bet you like them a lot more here than you would out behind your house for months and months. I go to the Salvation Armies and such a lot, and one thing they have, especially in Vancouver, is tons and tons of these Asian ceramic spoons that nobody seems to be using. Now, this stuff all gets dumped eventually. It just, they throw it away. We give it to them because we don't want it. They don't want it. Nobody wants it. Um, so I found a use for it. And once again, thrift in my eyes is all about using this. It's about training the eye to, to see and the brain to think again. So what I did is I drilled them and I turned them into what uh, I call it a spoon rack, but it's really a garment rack or tea towel rack. Once again, free. Satellite dishes, another thing I find in alleyways all the time. Tons and tons of satellite dishes. I have turned satellite dishes now into a variety of things. I've turned them into giant round blackboards. I've turned them into bowls. I've turned them into a variety of decorative items. But you know how people hang china on their walls? Well, I have all these mismatched blue and white plates. I photograph them, and then I, Avery makes this product, a heat digital transfer product. I powder coated the satellite dishes and then transferred the images onto that. I now have these really cool giant, well, actually, these sold, so it, yeah, a lot of the stuff sold. <laughs> I needed a pair of evening shoes to wear to a function. It's Halloween. These are an old pair of evening shoes. I saw them at the Sally Ann. I thought, what can I do to them to make them live again, reanimate them? That's, uh, you're looking at a sum total, if there were two shoes there, of $6 worth of improvements. And I think they are spectacular. This is one of my babies. I wanted a stool for my kitchen. I found this ratty thing. It was black and had an upholstered top on it, completely you know, rusted out and in terrible shape. Took it home, ripped off the top. I found this out behind a, a retail store. They'd thrown it out because it had a damaged interior. So I painted it and using an industrial glue, glued the top to it. And I've now got what I think is a very darling little stool, once again for free. And once again, it's not in your landfill. I would just like to conclude by saying that there's some wonderful quotes on the subject of thrift. One of my favorites is from Edison, and he says, do people not realize how great a scope that thrift is? Another one is from Cicero, who says, do people not realize uh, how great an income 
thrift is. And I think that we are going to have to realign a lot of our thinking and get back to using what we have in our garages, our cupboards. We have to be more respectful of the stuff that has already been extracted from the earth. It is a finite thing. We can't keep throwing stuff away. There is, we're running out of stuff and there is no way. So that's my take on thrift. Waste not, want not, folks. Thank you for listening. I'm Jane McDougall. Bravo, Jane. Though, though I must say, Jane, I worry about all the time you're spending in alleyways. I <laughs> know, so. I know. <laughs> I never Do you take a find direct that route Vancouver anymore. alleyways are more productive? Have you tried the Toronto I haven't alleyways? yet, but yeah. I'm planning on it, yes. All right, well, yeah. let's you and I go on an alley crawl <laughs> You can bring your yo-yo. Yeah. <laughs>